Our scripture today comes from Matthew's Gospel. We are not going to read the entire passage that is listed. I want to focus on, on two verses in the midst of this passage. Beginning in the 35th verse of Matthew 25. I invite you now to hear God's word. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. This is the word of God for all of the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me, please? Oh God, we ask now that by the power of the Holy Spirit you would let the scripture become a part of who we are. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we gather together today on All Saints Sunday to celebrate those who have gone before us, we also recognize that their ministry has had an incredible impact on each of our lives. All Saints Sunday has been celebrated in the church since the third century. And it's really interesting when we began to look at what all that looks like, it's very, it's, you know, we can, we can kind of focus in on what's happening with us right here and right now. And so I think it's important that we celebrate All Saints Sunday to understand that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and All Saints Sunday, instead of just focusing on those who have claimed their reward in this past year, it focuses on resurrection. And I love how our communion liturgy talks about that, that All Saints Sunday reminds us that we are a part of the past, the present, and the future. And as we gather and listen to that scripture, I think it speaks a lot to how our lives have been impacted by those saints of God before us. We hear it, and we think of it often as a call to action, a call for us to feed the hungry, a call for us to give something cool to drink to those who thirst. But I think when we celebrate All Saints Sunday, we remember that there are times in our life that we were the ones who were hungry, and we were the ones who were thirsty, and we were the ones who needed protection, and someone in our life provided that for us. So we come and we celebrate with our, with our communion liturgy as we talk about all the saints in heaven gathered at the heavenly banquet table and, and the Apostles' Creed, the, the traditional creed of the church that talks about we believe in the communion of the saints. We are not alone. We never have been. We never will be. And as we celebrate the saints, we recognize that Jesus truly promised to never leave us nor forsake us. You heard the names of those read a few moments ago, and the candles were, were lit, and, the, and the, the chime was rung, honoring the memory of each of those. And for many of you, I'm sure it was like a video playing in your mind as you thought about your lives, and you thought about what they meant to each of you. But I want you also to concentrate on the fact that they gave you something in the witness of their life that you would not be complete without it. This is one of those sermons that I, I have argued with myself. I argued with the staff. I argued with Sydney in the early service that I did not want to preach it because I don't like talking about myself. But I think you need to hear the story of how someone changed my life. And it was in uh, the person of my paternal grandmother, Naomi Folk Morton, was born at the turn of the 20th century. And she is one of those people who changed so many lives. She was the product of a very unlikely marriage. My great-grandfather came to West Texas from Pennsylvania. A 
was one of the very first people settling that part of West Texas and, and was owned quite a bit of ranch land. And my great grandmother grew up in the very sophisticated and affluent area known as Swiss Avenue in Dallas. And some would describe the marriage of our great grandparents as Riata meets Junior League. And out of that came a family long in tradition and gratitude and service. My grandmother wanted each of us to understand that we had a purpose in life and we were to live out of a sense of gratitude for what we had been given. And she had received that from her parents. My great-grandparents gave the, gave the land and, and funded the church that is still there today, the First Methodist Church of Sweetwater, Texas. And my great-grandmother and my grandmother both served for over 40 years each as the church organist. My grandmother wanted to make sure that we were mannerly, that we knew correct etiquette, and that we served others in our life. This is a picture of my grandmother on her 90th birthday with me and our, uh, our son Paul. And she lived every day rejoicing <coughs> in the fact that God had given her life. And it was that streak, that grace under pressure that I so remember about my grandmother. She had seen so much and from the beginning of the 20th century, two world wars, sending a 17-year-old son to the South Pacific and, and facing economic ups and downs that have rarely been experienced by, by a generation. And yet she was always ready to help. And she always insisted that we did the same things. And she was known as Gummy. She had all her teeth. But that was, you know, like the first grandchild always named the grandparents. That was what my older cousin called my grandmother, and so it stuck. But one thing I do remember about her is that she insisted that we know how to be good hosts and what all that meant. And I thought it was ridiculous, especially when I was in high school and a, a boyfriend was coming over for a family celebration and it was going to be a, a cookout in the backyard, very casual. But my grandmother said to me, do you know what you must do to prepare for guests? And I thought, you know, well, yeah, you get out the paper plates and the plastic forks and knives. And she said, I know that this is going to seem ridiculous, but I want you to understand what it means. And so she had me get out every piece of silver that was in that house. And I had to polish every piece of silver until it was just beautifully shining because that's what good hosts did. And as a young woman, I can remember thinking that I wanted so desperately to have her sense of peace and her sense of of strength. One thing that always remark was remarkable about my grandmother is that she read her Bible every day. This is her Bible. And what's interesting uh, in this is that she read through this many, many times. She has written notes in the margins of different passages. My grandmother was always on the cutting edge of things, and so this is not a King James Bible. This is a Revised Standard Version, and so she was looking for, for illumination even in that time. And she was never afraid to back away from, from, from uh, Scripture passages that were troubling. She would, she would write her arguments against it in the margins of the Bible as she read each day. But she would always put notes in the days about what had taken place in her life. She had talked to my aunt on that particular day, or, or she, had, she had gone to a concert on another day, and on one particular day, she said, Norma, is 10 today. As I watched the way she lived her life, 
I did not realize how she was weaving into my very being. Grace under pressure. When I was a young woman growing up, I wanted to make sure that I always lived up to the expectations of my family. I wanted to make sure that I was hospitable. I wanted to make sure that I uh, was uh, in service somewhere, some way in my life, in my church. And so I began to emulate my grandmother in so many different ways. She's the one who introduced me to the arts and to dance and to music. She was my piano teacher for as long as she lived. But she taught me so much more, and that is when things start to get difficult, you realize you're not alone. As a young mother, I thought that I could control everything. Until the day that a picture-perfect pregnancy ended in the death of my newborn baby. And as I stood at that open grave on a cold October rainy morning, I could feel my grandmother behind me and the strength that was caring for me. And then as a flourishing, as part of a flourishing accounting practice that was riding high on the oil boom in West Texas, when suddenly the, the bottom fell out and the bust happened almost overnight and it began to have a detrimental impact on my accounting practice, I, I realized that my grandmother has suffered through times like that and would thank God for everything that she had. And then, my, as my husband, my childhood sweetheart, decided to take a path of deceit and betrayal, my grandmother became the fixture in my life and in my, my two babies' lives. And I remember walking with her through a park one day, and there weren't very many parks in Sweetwater, Texas, but I remember so well my grandmother saying to me, you are going to get through this. And one way you're going to get through this is because I'm going to walk with you every step of the way. When things began to get serious between Bryant and me, I asked Bryant to go to Sweetwater. He went to visit my grandmother. Her approval was very important to me, and obviously she gave it her wholehearted approval. I remember her as one of the saints in my life because her ministry was one of strength and one of hope, even in the face of the most difficult circumstances. And I am different because of her ministry. And I want to ask you, there's been someone in your life that because of their ministry, you were changed. Because of the way they lived their life, you are a different person than you were before. And as you consider that person today, I would pray that you would give thanks to God for them. My grandmother passed away over 20 years ago, but she is still so alive to me and what she has left as her legacy. As we celebrate All Saints Day, whose legacy are you? Who's impacted your life? Even in the most trying of times, how he changed. I remember this song that was popular during the time that I was going through all of this um, awful stuff in my life. Larnell Harris was a contemporary Christian artist, and I think he's still performing. But I remember driving down I-20 one day, and there was nothing certain in my life but turmoil. And I heard this song, and the chorus goes something like this. 
So you were in it after all. All of those moments I spent crying, and something inside of me was dying. I didn't know that you heard me each time I called. You were in it after all. God puts people in our lives to carry us through. And God has put you in people's lives to carry them through. And I pray that today your life is different because of someone else's ministry and that you will continue that legacy for those who come behind you. You are in it after all. Let those with ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, for it's in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.